guys welcome back to another m creator tutorial so today what we're going to be covering is that teleportation um potion that we you guys wanted uh for the poll now there is a couple things that i did add now uh, if there is a player with a bed um then they will spawn at their bed um animals and stuff are a little bit different it's um not exactly the same way that it's set up with a bed, but it's very similar to how it reacts when a player doesn't have a spawn point from a bed. So if you were to, well, let, let's um, clean up all this. Uh, we'll just let these guys out and hopefully they all just kind of get out of here. So we'll just let them all, all get out of here. No, no. Let's just grab some weeds. We'll do that this way everyone out you too spring them all over here and then we will set up the fence again all right so now we can let these guys go all right so we have an empty thing this is where the spawn point is for the exact world and if the player basically doesn't have a spawn point such as a bed um, if we go over here, we'll demonstrate that we can set the uh, respawn point here. And then if we were to drink this, uh, we'll go back over to the spawn. And we'll end up at our bed where we basically saved our uh, thing. So if we were to stand over here and save, then we'll go over here just a little bit. And as you can see, we basically spawn on this particular block. So that's basically how that works. Uh, now, if they don't have a um, spawn point, then if we were to test it out on this cow right here, we'll just throw a splash potion and then it will end up at the spawn location here. Wow. So uh, you could configure it, I guess, uh, to basically go to the um, current player's spawn location that might work but I'm not sure how that would actually work um haven't tested it should I say so it should be possible it's just it needs a lot of configuration so there's uh, all the different types of potions as well there's the lingering one which you can throw and it will linger and teleport things there's the splash potion and you can also drink the potion as well and it'll bring you back to your bed. So that's basically the, the ones that I have set up here. Um, outside of that, uh, it works on pretty much everything. If you wanted to get a villager from over here, if you can find a villager, uh, we'll just throw a splash potion on them. We'll just go like this. And boom, they're gone. Now they should be over at the uh, spawn location now. Yep, here they are. Uh, one of them at least. Don't know where the other one went. I thought there was at least two that disappeared. Okay then, maybe it was a pig that we picked up too. Let's let's uh, try it out on a couple other ones. Uh, there should be. Uh, I wonder if we can get those two. Okay, let's see if that actually worked. I'm not sure if it will teleport all of them. It should teleport all of them. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, maybe. Ah, that's why, because they're all standing in in each other. Okay, so there's four villagers there now, so that's basically how that works. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the code. It's uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, the first thing that we actually want to do is we need to create a global procedure uh, for testing when the player right clicks on the bed. So what I've done here is uh, player right clicks on block for the global procedure. Uh, now we have these dependencies here, uh, block state, direction, and entity, uh, X, Y, and Z, and then world. Um, this procedure itself only requires entity X, Y, and Z, and the world, so um, it's possible to run this particular script. Uh, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm using an if statement. If statements can be found under um, flow control and then you can grab one of these, and then I'm using a block testing for the tag, uh, vanilla, a vanilla tag called uh, Minecraft Beds. So if we go under the uh, block data and then scroll down, there should be one that says 
um, is block tagged in the block tags as is like the block that we select tagged in the block tags as and then the tag name. So for the tag name, all we need to do is basically specify Minecraft for the namespace colon and that's those two dots and then we have the uh, beds with, with an S and that will specify the beds that we're right clicking on. Now what this does is it basically sets um, three global variables up. Now you could uh, add support for rotation, your yaw and stuff as well if you wanted to. Um, just to keep it simple though I basically set it up so the um, player location is specified on the um, X, Y, and Z for the location where they right click on. So if they're further away from the bed, it'll basically get the location where their position is. Now, for those variables, what I have is I have the um, three uh, variable, three global variables for player persistent, and they're all number variables. And I've set the default to zero, zero, zero and uh, that's where these three variables come in. So to create a variable, you just go to custom variables and then you grab that one and you make sure that it's on your global one for the player persistent. And then what you want to do is you want to go to your entity data and then you want to grab your entity position for X, Y, and Z for your different locations for X, Y, and Z. And then you just add them to that location and it should be set up perfectly fine. So with that being said, um, now that you basically have that part set up, you probably want to know where to get that block. That block can be found under block data. And again, it's right at the top here where it says get block at X, Y, and Z. Uh, you don't want the fluid one because it's not a fluid that we're basically testing for. It's a solid block because it's a bed. So you want the, the very top one right there. So that's that particular script. So when the player right clicks on a bed, it saves the uh, location to the current entity of the um, X, Y, and Z. Now the reason why we're using player persistent variables is so that it's unique to every player and it won't uh, go away once the player dies. It will end up, it'll go back to the same location for the same bed. So that's basically that one. And then for the other one, um, the, the other procedure that we have here is the um, teleportation potion effect um, effect spread applied. So this one right here is basically getting the um, local variable for the player. Now we're basically testing if it's equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, then what we want to do is we want to spawn them to the um, the actual, uh, what do you call it, the world spawn coordinates. So we're going to set the location of the entity. So to find the set entity location, what we need to do is go under here. And then you should find that somewhere uh, towards the bottom, there should be X, Y, and Z, this one set location of entity and then you can set the type of entity and then the x y and z now for the x y and z what you want to do is set get get current world spawn x y and z coordinate so for that what you want to do is go under the world data and then you should have get current world spawn at x y and z coordinate so these three blocks right here and if it is not zero then what we want to do is we want to get location um, for the variables that we basically set. So we're going to basically spawn the players at the, that location. So that's basically how the variables are set up. Now you could, in technicality, somehow apply the variables when the potion is thrown somehow to the other entity. I'm not sure exactly how to do that, um, at least not efficiently. But uh, if you were able to figure that out, that would be really interesting to know in the comments. Um, but I wasn't able to figure that out. And the best thing that I could come up with was this basic, this basic system. So for the potions, um, we have the potion effect, which is all set up here. Very standard potion settings. 
and then I've basically added this particular uh, trigger here for the actual trigger that we just covered the this one right here so this one will when effect started slash applied and we're basically just going to teleport them to based on the world location or where their bed is set so that's all there is to it. It's really straightforward, probably one of the easier ones. And this one right here basically just deals with the duration of the potions. I've set the names for the potions here. And the duration I have set to one tick because we don't want it to constantly teleport them. So uh, one tick is all we need. And the amplif amplified um, number is set to zero. This will set it to the strength of one for strength for level one and then I've just uh, checked to enable the ambient and the check to enable the um, particles so those are the two check boxes here so outside of that that's all that I have time for today if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out